everybody can hear me properly. All right. All righty. Hello, hello. It is good to see you guys. I hope everyone is doing well. Um, I had a little trouble with my mic there for a second, but I hope you are all doing swell on this fine Tuesday afternoon for me. Um, but I would love to know um, uh, who uh, is from where in the chat. Um, you can hear me? Okay, cool. Yeah, Steve said no audio, and I was like, oh no, um, but my, my mic was doing something wonky there for a second, um, but hopefully everyone can hear me. Um, I hope you were all having um, a fabulous day uh, and just enjoyed uh, Claudie's excellent session just before me. I'm here at the end cap. Um, kind of uh, doing some doing some fun things. Um, I can crank my my mic up just a little bit. Hopefully, you folks can hear me there. Um, I have everything turned down on my system sound, um, so it's everything is. Uh, the sound levels, I think what you hear and what I hear are different, but hello, I am Voodoo Val and I am here uh, for another episode of Graphic Love, which I am also realizing my title um, needs a little update because today we are doing traditional art the digital way. Um, and I'm pumped about this because um, I am predominantly an illustrator um, and this is something that I absolutely love, love, love to do. Um, uh, is like drawing and painting and fresco, but today we are going to take a look at the live brushes. We're going to do some sketching around um, and we are going to make digital art that looks as if it was done with a traditional medium. Um, we're going to play with some watercolor brushes, some, some oil brushes and things, and I'm going to show you folks how I pick out my brushes. How do I kind of, how I kind of utilize the brushes that are available in fresco, um, how I sample a brush palette. And by that, I mean, um, where you, you know, you, you pick your colors and you're using that set of colors, kind of how I choose a set of brushes that I'm going to use when I approach, um, kind of a specialized style, um, in, in, uh, fresco illustration. Um, no, we're not going to be doing etching. We're going to be doing some, uh, some sketches and we're, then we're going to be diving into kind of like an underpainting of sorts, um, in a digital manner. So I'm going to pop over here to my iPad, um, which I hope you folks can see. And I don't think my title actually updated. So let me go ahead and update this. Let me try this. Um, All right, hopefully that works. Yeah, yeah, I think that worked. Okay, traditional art the digital way. Um, so what we're gonna do is I am working on my iPad Pro. I've got my handy dandy Apple Pencil um, and I kind of have like an idea of what I want to do today, um, but feel free folks in chat to um, call out some ideas because we are gonna need a subject matter um, for the stream. I'm just drawing some circles, getting my hand used to the motions of uh, drawing and illustrating. This is something that I like to do when I warm up um, and get ready to uh, start an illustration project. I just like do all these little things because when you sit down and it's your first drawing of the day or um, if you are like me today where you are doing something or you, you know, you've illustrated a little bit earlier um, in the day, you've taken a break, you come back and you kind of find your chops again. Um, so I like to do, I like to do a little bit of this. I like to um, just kind of come through and, and do a little sketching. I'm like holding the pencil in different ways in my hand and um, kind of approaching my canvas in, at different angles from, uh, from, from different directions and just scribbling on it. Yes, you can see the iPad underpainting always reminds me of James Gurney's work. Yes, indeed. Yes, indeed. Um, let me double check here. Uh, I always seem to get a strange warning that says that I'm having a connection issue, but then I see that it's still up. So let me know in the chat. If you guys see any hiccups or anything strange, let me know. Um, but what I'd like to do, what I think would be really cool is if we did some little pots. A while back I did um, a live stream um, illustrating like little pots uh, with faces on them for uh, San Francisco Design Week. And I did this in um, an Illustrator for iPad, um, but I would love to try it um, in like more of a more of an illustration um, sketch uh, painted type uh, method. So um, I, and I was thinking that that would kind of mesh well with what we're going for, like kind of doing like traditional type 
um, sketches. So if you can imagine like doing some pots with some funny little faces on them uh, and kind of making the underpainting, like the colors and everything really look like um, glaze, like terracotta glaze or um, something like that would be really, really cool. And then we can take suggestions from chat for which kind of plants we're gonna pop in there um, and all that good stuff. Uh, so I'm gonna kind of get started on that. But if you folks would like to shout out some things in the chat that you think would be fun to see me illustrate today, let me know. Um, let me know if you have any questions about um, just your own creative journey as far as sketching. Um, if you have any questions about Fresco itself, I'm an open book. Let me know if you're having any trouble with anything or need any advice. I'm uh, your girl for that. Um, so let's let's choose some brushes. One of the, the default brushes that you kind of start out, um, like right when you open Fresco, it kind of puts you on this pencil brush. Um, and that pencil brush is not bad. It's got a nice texture to it, which I feel like I've probably said a billion times that I really love having like a nice charcoal texture. Uh, but today we're gonna be working with interesting brushes, um, specifically the live brushes, as I said. Uh, we are gonna do an initial sketch with the pixel brushes, however. So um, the way that I like to pick out brushes to use for projects like this is I will go through and hunt through all of the brush packs that I, that I have. Um, and you can find new brushes if you hit add brushes right at the bottom here. Um, and it'll take you to this page that has, if you go to discover new brushes, you can go through all of these super awesome, like mega packs and themed seasonal packs from Kyle T. Webster. Um, if you would like to add some new ones, you could also come in and say, add new brushes and do imp import from files. And that's what I've done here with um, like this brush. This is a noise brush that I have created myself um, that I do um, a lot, a lot of art with. I, I paint with this brush constantly. It's like a noise texture that I created. Um, it's pressure sensitive, so you can do like a lot of like really soft um, sketches with it, like to fill in space. And if you press harder, it kind of gives you like a gradient. Um, I really like it because it allows me to convey depth. So if I do like a hard and soft and hard and soft and hard and soft. It almost kind of looks like that's spiraling around in a way, which is really cool. Um, and this is the brush for any of you who caught the um, College Humor uh, Dungeons and Dragons show, um, the Dimension 20 Coffin Run show that came out. I did all the illustrations for that season um, and every illustration that I did was actually painted with this brush. Um, so I, this is one of my favorite ones. So we're gonna uh, kind of, I, I, I pulled that up and I'm using it because if you pull up a brush and you use it, Fresco does this excellent thing where now you can go into brushes all and if you scroll up here to the top, it'll say recent. So I've got that pencil brush that it opened up um, Fresco, uh, you know, uh, Fresco opened and it put it on default. My noise brushes here, I know I'm gonna use that. And I just sort of collect the brushes that I'm gonna dive into um, in my recents there. And then I know that I can just go there and go towards, uh, go and, and, and kind of sift through those as I make my way through my project. You can favorite brushes as well. If you select a brush and there's like, you know, there's a little star next to it so you can click Click that star to access the favorites but my favorites is really hefty um, it's a very hefty favorites folder so I just like to kind of collect what I'm what I know I'm gonna use um, I'm thinking maybe I'll snag this uh, ink box uh, parallel as well because this is like a nice if I kind of crank up the point here. Um, this is kind of a nice sharp brush for a little bit of sketching as well. Um, so let's go ahead and, and use those for now. Um, so I'll come into all my recents. I'll grab my noise brush uh, and I'm going to just sketch out some forms here that I think would be super cute as like a, a pot of sorts. I'm actually going to make my brush much smaller. Um, and if I just do like some cool little silhouettes, um, I think that that will work. I want one that's like kind of uh, short and squat, uh, I think would be cool. Just make some little tiny uh, shapes here. And keep in mind, uh, something that I've come to terms with when it comes to my own art is a lot of my sketches are, they don't look great right off the bat. They, they really don't. Um, a, lot of my, a lot of my paintings uh, can be 
very, very rough until the very end. And I used to feel really bad about that because um, I just felt like, you know, I watched so many other really amazing artists um, start their work and all of their art is like, I assume that it's so good right off the bat because I see their portfolio sketches. I see like the sketches they post in their um, project files and things like that. And to me, it looks like they get these sketches done perfectly 100% um, every time they sit down to paint right off the bat. And I honestly, I don't think that's the truth. I think a lot of people post the, um, the pieces that look the best uh, in their portfolios, but that doesn't mean that sketches look perfect right off the bat. You know, just because my sketches don't look like ready for print right when I sit down and do them does not mean that I am not a good artist, and it does not mean that um, my piece won't eventually turn out really, really great. Um, so if you're sketching with me today um, and you're starting to like kind of go along uh, in your, your project and your journey, uh, with me this afternoon and you're feeling a little down about um, how your sketches look compared to mine or how you feel your sketches look compared to other artists out there, uh, be kind to yourself. <laughs> be nice. <laughs> be nice. Okay. Um, I've got, this is kind of a cool shape. That could be interesting. That could be a fun one. I'm going to throw that right there. Um, let's see. Really like that. Awesome. Um, I see somebody wrote bucket and I hadn't intended on drawing a bucket and I don't know if bucket, if you mean bucket as in draw a bucket, but we could do like a, like a pail of sorts. We could totally do like a pail, um, kind of shape here. That could probably be fun. We can, you know, do our little our little shadow. I'm actually thinking maybe we bring it down like that. A little pale. And we could have a little face on it in this area um, with our, our plants kind of dangling out the side. You know, could be interesting. That could be fun. Uh, we'll go ahead and throw that one up over here. Um, any ideas? Any ideas from the chat? Um, does anybody have any favorite pots at home? Um, I have uh, some little tiny pots uh, in my window that look like this. I'll show you. I've got a series of three of them and they're uh, gray, charcoal black, and then they have like gold leaf accents. And they look like this. And all of them have a different design on them. So they, you know, they have these tiny little openings and I got them for succulents. Uh, so they look like that. And then they have like, um, a black lip and then like, a a zigzag pattern, you know, of like gold leaf across. And those are pretty fun. Um, so that would be kind of a cute one to get, to get going. There we go. I actually really like that one compared to the other shapes. You can see too, um, do a little sketching around because as you can see, like this is the, 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 the first, my first sketch for today. Um, and compared to this one, I feel like this one is like, you know, this one's cool. Uh, whereas this one is like a lot more sad <laughs> than it. So like, as you warm up, as you start to get through your project, your sketches do get better because you start to get comfortable. And maybe as you move through your, your sketches still isn't on par with where you hope it would be. Um, but keep in mind that, uh, you gotta, you gotta allow yourself time to grow, allow yourself to, um, the time. Uh, to put in that practice and you won't get to where you want to be if you don't just, you know, sit down and just go for it. Don't, don't fear, don't, um, kind of down on yourself. Just, just put pencil to paper or put stylus to tablet and just go for it and you will improve. Um, definitely need a comic papyrus plant. Uh, if we could get a ban in the chat for Clever Devlin, that would be great. <laughs> Uh, Val on Twitter. Ooh, yeah, thank you for posting my, my Twitter link. I appreciate it. Um, place to post these after show. Oh, yeah, 
totally please um if you actually if you guys draw a plant with me today and you post it on twitter and tag me i will retweet your art i will totally retweet your art that's a that's a definite um anytime i do an episode of graphic love and you guys throw that up on twitter that's an instant retweet from me um a rose in a pot okay all right do you want like um like a rose rose or do you want like hens and chickens um so for those of you who don't know, uh, the common succulent that a lot of people have is like those those big, chunky succulents that look like a big blooming uh, rose or like kind of like the blooming onions that you get at like a fair or something. Like when you, like they deep fry the onion after they bloom it out and it just is like thick and like rose-ish like that. Those are called hens and chickens. Um, and they're really cool, you know, so like you, you kind of have like a little of this and they kind of look, you know, like that, I guess, I guess that's, you know, it almost looks kind of chrysanthemum or chrys chrysanthemum, I think is how you say that. Chrysanthemum-esque is also kind of how it looks. And it just has like that nice blooming, um, effect. And that might keep, cause I guess, I mean, we're sort of doing succulents. I feel like everything has a succulent pot vibe here. Um, and so we could do like a little, a little one that looks like a rose, uh, in honor of, uh, of Misha, um, hen and chicks. Yeah. Chrysanthemum ask indeed for sure. For sure. That's okay. So you say hen and chicks, um, and growing up, but granted, a lot of the places I grew up are like in the country. <laughs> Growing up, the people that have them call them hens and chickens. <laughs> hens and chickens. That's what we called them. <laughs> Maybe we're wrong. Maybe we're just uh, country slanging it. I don't know. I'm not sure. It's possible. It's entirely possible. I actually really like these two. Um, I think these ones are actually really good. Uh, these two, those are great. Uh, I might actually, let's go ahead and hide. Um, that was a great idea. Uh, I think that was Misha. Um, let's go ahead and let's use these ones. I'm going to go ahead and like kind of blow them up side by side here. Um, and we'll get them going because we do have to settle on one. We're only about, um, we're, we're under 20 minutes in, but there's a lot of stuff that I would like to do today. So let's kind of throw, let's throw this one up here. Let's kind of make like a, like a whole piece. Like it doesn't have to look like it's um, sitting on a surface. And I thought maybe we would do that, but what we could do is just have, you know, kind of a artsy look to this. Like if they overlap each other like that, maybe we'll put, maybe we'll put the um, hen and chicks or the hens and chickens. Um, over top or uh, underneath, excuse me. Um, and, uh, just kind of have them floating there, which might be cool. I'm going to go ahead and say select multiple, um, and I'm going to group those together. And I'm also going to bump them down because what we can do, um, is then this will allow us to, um, in this other space, let me get my sketch sketcher here as well. Um, if I wanted to, we could also put, you know, like some little something somethings out here. Uh, I don't know, maybe little petals kind of flowing around. Just, you know, some outside decoration would be cool. You know, just kind of hanging out. Um, and that could be fun. So it kind of looks like a well-rounded little piece, something you might like put in a tiny frame or hang on a wall or something like that could be cute. Um, but the next thing we're going to do is we want to, you know, kind of in, in keeping with the traditional art, the digital way, we want to start making this look more like a traditional piece. Um, so what I'd like to do is lay out some base shapes behind my sketch here. Um, and then we can paint those in. I'm, I'm trying to see, um, hmm. Cause usually what I do is I'll come in, if I make a new layer under here, I'll come in with like, uh, a sharper brush, crank that up. I'll grab like a gray here. Um, and I would come in, so 
something like this. I don't know if I like that brush. Let's go to the comic. Um, you know, come in and start like shaping these out. Like, okay, there's our pot, like a clean shape for our pot. Um, and then I would use a clipping mask and start coloring them in. But since we're going to be using, um, like the live brushes, what we could do is do this part of the way and maybe color them in with like water color or color them in with like oils at first and then um, put the details on the pots in like watercolor. Oh, so, so it will look like a ceramic pot that has a glaze on it that kind of drips down or looks very organic. We could try that. Um, so let's, let's do that. Let's do some experimentation here. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm actually, we'll leave, we'll, yeah, we'll leave that. Um, and I'm going to come in here to our group. I'm just going to hide this for right now. Cause we're going to kind of focus on our, our one pot here. Um, and I will clean this up. So I'm going to snag an eraser. The hard round there will be nice. Um, I'm going to clean up the edges on this a little bit and um, let's, uh, I think I'm satisfied with that for now. Uh, we will also, I'll turn, we'll turn this way down as well because I don't want to see too much of it. I want the suggestion of our sketch here um, just to, so, you know, so we, we're, we're still looking at our original concept, um, but in a way that doesn't, um, kind of get in our way so that we can see what we originally planned. We can, you know, keep our eye on the ball, so to speak, but we're not really, um, sticking 100% perfectly to that original sketch. All right, there we go. A little cleaner, a little cleaner. I think it's, I think I ended up making this chunkier than I wanted though. So let's, I just wanted the line to be clean. It didn't necessarily have to be that wide. Okay, there we go. So we got a little pot. Um, now what I'm gonna do is we will use clipping masks um, for some of our live brushes. So I made a new layer. I'm gonna hit my little arrow here just to, you can see as I toggle that on and off, um, it just clips to that layer. Uh, and I'll come over here into our live brushes. Um, and I am going to, just this one in the center, you'll know I, I clicked the vector brushes by accident there, but we're gonna go into live brushes. Um, and so we have some watercolor brushes and we have some oil brushes. And I think that oil would probably be great to start out with. Uh, we've got our oil paint round. Um, so that's where we'll go to. I wanna actually, let's select some colors first. Let's make sure we get our colors in here. Cause I wanna like sample from a color palette. Um, so I'm going to go with like a terracotta Feel free if you got some cool uh, ideas for what we could, what color these pots could be. Shout it out in the chat for sure. Uh, I'm just gonna grab some colors here that I think are like earthy, um, and I'm gonna, I'm gonna just kind of throw these over here. Um, some brights, some earthy warms. Um, I think it would be really cool if we got even like a, like a greenish color going in there, something like that. Um, and then maybe even like a, um, a turquoise, like a turquoise color, um, I think would be really, really interesting. You know, something like that. Something cool. Just to see what we can do, you know, so a little of that some of these colors. Um, and on our clipping mask layer, we will start to paint some stuff in. So let's grab our oil. Uh, now the oil uh, painting is really, really fun because this is gonna mix. So you notice I did make a color palette here um, and we can do some color mixing and things with this. I just wanted them separate for a little while. 
Um, and I am going to, with like our darker color here, I'm just gonna start throwing some paint in. Graphic Glow Up channel um, in the Photoshop Discord, like the power prompts. Yes, yes, it's called, actually it's called um, Game Show. Cause I do, I do a lot of, I do a lot of different game shows here. Um, so the game show is kind of, the game show uh, channel is just, if you ever want to share um, anything that you have done um, during the show there. Um, you you folks might have noticed that um, since the show came back um, after our break, um, we have not been doing our awards. So I'm waiting till the last episode of this month and we're gonna do, I'm gonna do a smaller project and we're gonna do a big awards Thing where we award ourselves points and acknowledge our own artistic growth and things um, as we used to do every episode. And whatever art you folks have done during these shows or inspired by these shows or anything like that, if it's in that game show tag, that game show channel in the Photoshop Discord, I'm pulling it up and we're going through it all on the stream. So if you folks would like to share, if you want a verbal and visible shout out here on the show, um, kind of show off your work and stuff, please share it because we'll be making a special award ceremony for that for sure. Um, let's see. Can't stop thinking about the chaos that was Baby Yoda last time I was here. Honestly, um, we don't always get that crazy, but when we when we do decide to act wild, we get wild. Um, so what I'm doing here is I'm just like starting to, I, I kind of filled in that color um, and I'm starting to throw um, some of this like lighter terracotta-esque uh, color here. And you can see that it's starting to like mix for me, which I think is great. What I'm trying to do, cause I can come over here and I can start like swirling it, mixing it around. You can see how that does. Um, and in fact, I'll just to be more dramatic, I'll grab some of this blue um, and you can see how that mixes around. Uh, but I'm trying to, I'm actually going to um, hide our sketch here so it doesn't distract me too much. Um, what I'm trying to do is keep like the light coming. Actually, since this is gonna be centered there, actually our light needs to come from a different direction. So let's actually uh, grab our dark here um, and let's put that back over here, like make that darker. We still have like some of those light tones a little bit, um, but I wanna like kind of keep it, make sure the light source is coming from the proper side. So we've got like, you can see there's like a lot of texture here. I don't know how, I hope that you can see it as well as I do. Um, but what I'm gonna start doing um, is I'm gonna start adding even more um, colors in here and start painting this. Um, to kind of feel like a like a terracotta pot like a clay pot um the pot matches your makeup now thank you <laughs> you know i gotta color coordinate you know you know um let's see i kind of i kind of like that but i feel like this brush maybe we need to experiment with a different brush because we got our base down um, but let's let's come into our brushes because I want to add some of that color in but I don't want it to be crazy So let's see like oil paint chunky. Let's see what we get with oil paint chunky Ooh, yeah, that might that might be great um, Just to kind of like start spreading that around. I feel like it needs to be bigger because I'm getting a lot of like texture which is good, but not the kind of texture I want so I'm just kind of blending that in. So I threw some of that yellow in there and I'm just doing some swirling motions just to kind of start bringing that in to the pot there, which I think is actually looking really cool. I wanna sample some of this, um, maybe some of this green uh, and I'm gonna throw that green in right there. I'm gonna grab this blue um, and I'm going to throw this blue in over here. This is the shadowy side. I wanna blend some blues in there and I'll even grab um, some of this here. I'll grab some of that dark blue and throw that in there. Um, and with that, I will then um, grab the dark here again. And I'm gonna start coming over here and I'm just swirling and I'm blending together. Okay, I'm just blending it together and you can see how it's different. It is different than painting um, with your, uh, your usual um, brushes because it's not like it's painting, like painting with a low opacity of a specific brush. We really are 
blending everything as we go. We've got this nice like texture kind of uh, in there, which is kind of neat. And we can start as I, it's actually really, really relaxing to do, which I highly recommend you guys try this, um, just to come in uh, and, and start laying this color down and just, I'm just swirling and, and mixing it up and playing uh, and having a good time. I love it. I'm actually gonna find us a brand new color I'm gonna kind of bring us down into this brown here. I'll come back to our color palette, grab my pixel brush, and I'm just gonna throw a brown down there because I do wanna try that brown. We'll come back to our oil paints. And with that brown, I'm gonna try and throw some of this dark brown over here just to really um, kind of bring in a darker color, like on the edge here. Bring it into kind of a 3D space, kind of painting like so. Um, I love the blending, makes it look so natural. It is also very calming. If you guys are having a bad day, if you need a break from a stressful project, um, even if you don't have a, a purpose or a reason for it, you know, something in mind that you want to make, jump into Fresco um, and just start mixing paint with the, uh, with the live brushes. Um, it is a good time. You will not be disappointed. Um, I do like, let's grab some more of this green. This kind of, cause I like having that green in there. And I like having this weird variation of color because then it's not like I just dropped in some red terracotta, you know, then it just feels really a lot like, um, you know, when you see like a terracotta pot in the garden or something, it's never, it's never just flat orange. It's always got stuff in it. You know, it's, it's got texture. It's got, you know, maybe rust that's rubbed off, um, from something or other. It's got, uh, maybe it used to be leaned up against a green pot and it has, um, some of the residue from that pot, pot's paint job, you know, chipped off on one side. Um, it's got, it's got stuff. Life has got stuff in it, you know? <laughs> uh, what's the paint mix of your brush? So I can go through the settings here. So I have the flow just like pretty low on 17 cause I didn't want it to glom on, which will change a little bit because we're going to start having to kind of carve the lip of our pot out here. Um, and then um, if I come up here to the paint mix, it's about 62, 60 esque. Um, but if we crank that up, I'm gonna make another, a new layer um, here because I like what I've done here and I don't wanna change it. But if we come in and we turn that paint mix up and we throw like this blue in here, and then we can grab this um, yellow, you can start to see that like, as I glom it down, let me turn my flow up higher. Um, it'll, it'll start to smear. So see, just turning that flow up like that, it's, you can see it doesn't do like that anymore, which I love to do because it almost looks like you threw, like, like you're painted on a canvas like that. Just, that's just, it's so satisfying. Thank you, Fresco Gods. Um, but if you change that flow, turn that up and then, um, bring up that paint mix, you can see, um, here there's nothing there under, underneath that layer on the, on this layer. Um, so when I paint there with the blue, it's pretty blue. Um, but if I decide that I'm going to paint over an area with paint already on it, you can see it starts out green, but as it cruises through here, it starts to drag those other colors, um, with me. And, uh, it's very satisfying, <laughs> very, very satisfying. Um, so then we could do something like this where we come in here. Um, and let me grab like this dark Brown here. Uh, and we could do something like this. Just kind of throw that to start making that look like a pot. I think also we will edit our original here because I want to round these sharp edges around that a little bit so I'm just on that original layer um, which you can see uh, right here just realized I could do that I could point <laughs> that layer there um, is the what we're clipping to um, and uh, if I alter that I can kind of edit the the shape a little bit the way that I want it to be um, and then we come back up to our uh, 
clip here. I'm gonna grab some of this, some of this orange, um, and we're gonna kind of bring that in here a little bit. And I am actually gonna come through with uh, to clean up these edges, I am, because um, I want them a little cleaner than that. Um, but, uh, and you know what? It might actually be interesting to mix uh, the kind, because I might not want to like do a, 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 like cut the crease like that per se, but if I made myself another layer, I could just grab my um, pixel brush and do it. I think I might do it that way. Grab our pixel brush. Um, and I'll, I'll just, I, I'm saying like cut the crease, like I'm talking about makeup. Any, if there's any makeup uh, humans in here um, who know about what a crease cut is, I apologize. This is not what cutting the crease is. That's not what this is. This is not eyeshadow. Um, but uh, you know, uh, if you have any fresco questions for Val, please feel free to ask them in chat. Absolutely. What's your favorite art period or movement? Um, to be honest, when I was like learning how to do art, uh, I suppose I have like traditional like old master paintings that are my favorite. When I when I was growing up, um, I had a the, what was on my wall in my room is I had. Um, Sebulba and Anakin Skywalker in their pods for for um, uh, the pod racing portion of the prequels. That was on my wall, and then right next to it was Starry Night by Van Gogh. Um, and so Van Gogh has always had like a uh, um, Star Wars and Van Gogh have always been like um, big parts of my life, and um, I definitely favor a lot of Van Gogh's pieces um, over others. But um, just side note here, I'm going to actually lock the transparency so I can paint within this cut piece here that we're doing. Um, I'm going to grab a darker color here and I'm just going to kind of make the interior here. Uh, but yeah, uh, I guess I like uh, Van Gogh, but to be honest, I don't have like a favorite period of old traditional art. I really don't. Um, and I, I feel like when I was kind of getting into art, I thought that that made me not a sophisticated artist. Like if I didn't, if I couldn't name all the masters and um, speak eloquently about the different eras of art and all of that, that maybe I was not, I don't know. It just made me feel lame. Like I couldn't have those conversations with other people and I was never trained, um, uh, professionally um, to, to do art. Um, I'm a self-taught artist. I actually learned just from coming to places here like Adobe Live um, and stuff like that. But it kind of made me feel bad because I, I feel like that was what was expected of me. But really, I think if I think about it, um, if I have to choose an era of art, um, I think my favorite era of art ever in the history of the planet is now. Because now it's not, you know, it's not how do I say it? Art's for everybody now. Everyone can can make art and everyone can express themselves artistically. If you can pick up a, a paintbrush, you know, and, and or or if you pick up a stick and draw in the sand, like anyone can can do art now. Um, anyone can share their art, anyone can can post their art and uh, start their own perf like personal art journey. Um, and throughout history, that wasn't true for everybody. You know, I feel like there were, you know, if, if when we look back at human history, there's been a lot of times where um, there were people who weren't allowed to make art or there were only certain kinds of art that you made. And as somebody who only likes to paint dark fantasy and make monsters, and, and tell horror stories and stuff with my artwork. Um, I don't think there's any other point in time in our history where I would be as appreciated as I feel when I paint for you all um, than now. And so I feel like this is the best. This is the best time to be an artist. This is the best time to, to express yourself creatively, 
you know? Um, and I would not choose to be born in any other time. Because I think that I'd be an artist every time. Um, uh, and I, I would choose, I would choose now every time because this is my favorite age. Uh, didn't Ryan go into design university? I think so. No problem, Annika. That's my pleasure. I'm not going to focus too much on this. I feel like there, you know, this is, this needs some, 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 some something, something. Um, maybe it's that these corners are rounded and I shouldn't have done that after all. Maybe they kind of need to come up. I don't know. Um, I'm not, I'm not sure about that, to be honest. Maybe that was it. I mean, that's it right there. Um, but I'm going to leave that. I think that's cool. We've got, I feel like that looks like a cool pot. Um, and it needs a little something, something. It needs a little umph. Uh, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to actually select multiple and I'm going to grab all of these uh, and I'm going to group them. Um, and I'm going to clip to this group and we're going to use, um, I want to know what it will be like if we clip some watercolor to this pot and try to make it look like we've got a terracotta pot here and we've got somebody that's painted with glaze over it. Let's experiment, shall we? So let's come over to our watercolors um, and let's just see if I grab this blue. If I grab this blue. <laughs> okay, if I grab this blue, and I do all of this kind of stuff on here and I start painting if I grab like a let me grab like a like a dark start kind of adding to it I feel like we need like a, a really dark color um, we can kind of start I'm just tapping and I'm adding you can see how this adds I want to like zoom in on this as I tap you can see how it starts to add look there we're getting like a drop like a, like a drip kind of like that's dripping. And I don't know. So I, I do ceramics. I like, I haven't done it in a long time. I say I do ceramics. Like I, like I do it all the time and I really don't do it all the time. Um, it is a passion of mine. Something that I wish I could do every single day is, um, make ceramics and, and, uh, fire it in the kiln. Um, and one of my favorite kinds of ceramics to do is called Raku ceramics. It is a Japanese, uh, ceramic technique where you, um, you make your pot, you put it in the kiln, but you pull it out early. You pull it out when it's red hot, like lava. You don't let it cool in the kiln and you put it in a big metal bucket of combustibles. Combustibles meaning um, like dead leaves, um, wood chips, uh, old branches, just like combustible material that will catch fire. You drop it in there, you put a bunch of more combustibles on top and you shut the lid and you let it cool that way. Um, and what it does is any exposed um, clay that doesn't have glaze on it turns charcoal black. Um, and all of the glazes, they do cool stuff like they, they puff up and get texture like alligator skin or um, they, uh, they look like gold leaf. You know, there's a lot of really cool stuff that you can do, um, but I love it. And one of the things that happens sometimes with these glazes is you get like these pieces where you've painted it on, um, but because you've put it through all these combustibles, you've had it in the kiln and everything. If you put that glaze on heavy, that glaze actually oozes down and you get like these pieces like this, where there's just like a collection, like a higher concentration of pigmentation of the, the, the glaze color. Uh, which looks really cool. I'm also going to come through here and change the water flow, by the way. So if we quite, our water flow is pretty high and you can see it's like dripping, you know, like it's really making like drips on here, which I think is cool. I was going to do the designs more, uh, uniform than this, but I think this is cool. Um, but if I crank this water down, you can see it, I'm, I straight up put you know, the color there. And it's like more, it's like, it's like painting with a dryer brush, uh, essentially is kind of what we're doing. If I tap this and make that a little darker, I'm going to come in and tap over here because where our shadow is. Um, I feel like I always bite off a lot to chew in these episodes too, because I'm realized we're coming up on about 10 minutes left here. And I don't know if we'll get to our other pot. Um, but I think this is, I think it's fine. I think we can probably, uh, just do this one. Um, 
I'm gonna also grab, let's grab this blue. Let's throw some, let's throw some light blue over here. Just kind of blend that. Uh, but you can kind of come in here and mess with this. You can mess with the flow here as well if you just want like really subtle. Like I just want to kind of brighten this up um, so that it kind of matches where that is brighter, um, where the light kind of hits the pot there, you know, or glaze. And I guess we're using, we're using the watercolor brush, but we're using it to create like more of a, uh, we're not using it to create watercolor texture. We're using it for like pot glaze, which is kind of interesting, but, um, I like it. I'm having a good time. Um, I think, uh, let's maybe add another lip. I guess we also talked about adding faces, but this looks so realistic now. It almost, I feel like it almost should just be like it is. Let me select all of these because I'm going to transform this and throw this here. Um, what kind of, what kind of plant, what kind of plants going in this one? What kind of plant are we putting in this? Right. While we decide that I'm gonna take a break from the pot itself. Um, I also still feel like I need to clean up the shape. Now I'm nitpicking. I'm, I'm, I'm picking at it. You guys ever do that where you're like, Hmm, this is good. Actually, no, it is not perfect enough. It's still like in the lip of it is giving me anxiety. I'm going to not just don't look at it. Just don't look at it, Val. Just don't look at it. Uh, I'm, I'm meaner to myself than I should be about my work and I should probably practice what I preach and, uh, not be so hard on myself. I can't expect you folks to not be hard on yourselves if I can't not be hard on myself. So I'm going to go ahead. I'm going to drop in like a background color here and start messing around with a background. And maybe you folks, uh, let me know what kind of plant we should put in this in our last, uh, 10 minutes. If you want to. Um, and we'll kind of just make this a, make this a one pot sort of piece here. I don't know if watercolor is right for background painting, or at least not this watercolor brush. Let's look, let's see, um, wet spatter. Uh, I don't think that's right for it either. Let's see. Um, basic watercolor. Can we crank that up really large and turn that flow down and turn the water up? Uh, let's look and see our oils. Let's go back to our oils. Oil paint chunky, like a big, or maybe oil paint round. I will actually start a new layer. That could have been our problem that we were like painting on the actual layer and maybe it just wasn't blending the way I had hoped. Um, let's go ahead and eh, I don't know. I'm just going to noodle. I'm going to noodle. I'm going to not give up hope and I'm going to, I'm going to noodle around. I'm going to blend. I think I want it to be softer. I don't think I want it to be like big, crazy, um, obvious strokes. I just want it to be like kind of textured in the back. Maybe we'll throw in some of our blue. Um, let's see. Venus flytrap. Ooh. Okay. What I want to know, what is a dinosaur weed? Hyena roots, dinosaur weed. Are these real plants? Are you playing with my emotions? You gotta be. Those aren't real plants, are they? What happens if I do? Nah, I like it. We're gonna, we're gonna leave it like this. Okay. Uh, dinosaur weeds? Don't know what dinosaur weeds are. Um, we have five minutes, so I don't know if I can draw a Venus flytrap in five minutes. I really don't know. Um, but I am going to let's. I'm going to transform this. Put this over here. Um, I'm going to attempt 
in five minutes to put a plant in this. And I'm gonna use the pixel brushes for this because we've got like this really nice, I really like the way this pot turned out. I think it's super great. Um, I'm just gonna ski itch. Let's grab our green because our green is good. What is it like? How, I know what a Venus flytrap looks like, but as far as like the structure of the plant, I don't know. I wonder if a cactus would be easier in the last five minutes. I'm gonna, like if I did. I might just do a cactus only because time is, time is short. Let's see. Cutting it close, cutting it close, about, yeah, about five minutes. But I'm just gonna throw some interesting shapes down here. Um, and I'm putting them on different layers because I would like to come back and paint them individually. Something like that. Uh, and then I'm gonna, oh, I put that on the wrong, I put that on, hold on. I put that on the layer with our color. So I'm gonna go layer, cut, cut selection and paste selection. So it's on its own layer. Um, I am going to grab all of these. Group them, I'm gonna merge them, move them up. And then the texture on the bottom from it not being like a clean paint can just be like dirt. Um, okay, so let's come in here. Let's go ahead and uh, clipping mask some stuff. Let's grab our, I'm thinking watercolor. Let's grab our watercolor. Grab the watercolor like that. Um, short wee arms, <laughs> yeah. Um, let's grab our blue and let's just see what we can, what kind of trouble we can get into with this. I feel like this could be cool if we just kind of, kind of spread this around. Um, I don't know. Let's grab something like this dark, like this really dark and just kind of fade that in there. I don't know, like kind of how the rock plants are interesting like that. I don't know. I'm just, I'm brainstorming here. I'm spitballing here. I'm just trying to throw some, some colors in. Let's throw like a dark blue in there and then let's get some of that green going over here. Um, and, uh, yeah, I'm just, I actually really like this. Let me turn the water, the water up on that and let's kind of get, I almost like it being like a, like a, a greenish blue plant. Cause I feel like that you know, if we got some some highlights in here and started really um, kind of going to town on this and making it look um, really realistic, I feel like we could really get someplace with that. That could be really fun. Um, I do have about two minutes um, left here. So, you know, not tons of time, um, but I, this is fun. I hope that you guys learned a lot about um, using the live brushes. Um, I know this isn't like an all encompassing kind of uh, focus class on these and we had a lot of fun. We noodled around with stuff and, and things like that. But I hope that you folks will like try and use them now if you never have before. Um, and uh, if you do that, I hope that you will share a little bit with me. I hope you'll put it in the discord. Remember we're gonna be doing um, at the end of the month, we are gonna be doing like a award ceremony. Uh, I'm gonna be giving myself um, some awards uh, for the hard work and the progress that I've made doing these projects uh, every week. But I'm also gonna be showing off all of the art from you folks. So if you would like uh, to put your work in the Discord, in the game show uh, channel, that is where I will be looking um, for your art to, to check it out. Um, when the time comes. Uh, and yeah, I'll be back uh, next Tuesday uh, for some more shenanigans uh, here on Adobe Live with another episode of Graphic Glow Up. Um, I kinda, I like it, I like it. It needs some, it's got, needs some, some, some definition. It needs some, uh, some something, something. 
I think that's kind of my default, whatever I say. Anytime a painting looks good but isn't quite there yet, I say it needs some something something. Um, I think we all know what something something means, you know, it's just a little, it's, it needs a little oomph, you know, it needs a little, well, something, well, <laughs> you know, it needs some, needs some time, needs some love, needs some effort, but uh, this was fun. This was a good time. Um, I hope you enjoyed this episode. Um, I am gonna head out here, um, but it was good to see all of you folks. Can't wait to see you uh, next week, um, and I will uh, talk to you then. Adios, everyone. Thank you.